the march. The Empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. I've always believed in nutrition and herbs. Super Male Vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals sourced from powerful organic herbs harvested around the planet and then concentrated for maximum potency. I just received my Male Vitality about three days ago, and I must say that is good stuff. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO or Organic Super Male Vitality Formula. Super Male Vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. I jump out of bed ready to fight these criminals every day. I look forward to waking up and taking my Super Male Vitality and getting the day started. It's not just the Super Male Vitality. All the products in InfoWarsLife.com are simply amazing. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality and other powerful products from InfoWars Life. A chemical spill contaminating the water supply in nine West Virginia counties. This year alone, over 300,000 people in West Virginia had their drinking water contaminated. What are the health effects of having these drugs in our drinking water? It's forced medical treatment without the consent of residents. My friends, water filtration is one of the most basic actions you can take to protect you and your family from the harmful toxins and heavy metals in your tap water. On average, the county says it sprays with the glyphosate at least once a week. A few filters cut out the glyphosate that is found in water supply worldwide. Remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, hydrofluorosilicic acid, sodium hexafluorosilicate. Fluoride it is in tea, it's in coffee, it's in water, it's in bread, it's in toothpaste. It is our responsibility to protect our families. The establishment's not going to do it. It's time to take action. It's time to filter our water. Visit InfoWarsStore.com and use promo code WATER to get 10% off their entire family of incredible products. Or call toll-free 888-253-3139. I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. Most people know that iodine deficiency has been a crisis around the world. Iodine is key to so many of the body's functions, especially the thyroid. I discovered a product being developed by Dr. Group. You now know it as Survival Shield True Nascent Iodine that your body can really absorb. Then, about a year ago, he said, listen, if you think this is powerful, I'm going to come out with rare earth, deep earth crystals. And the results that I personally have had have been life-changing. Nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. This is innovating, and the best part is it helps fund InfoWars.com, the radio show, the TV show, the whole media operation promoting true libertarian ideas. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. Take advantage of this unprecedented 30% off Super Detox Special at InfoWarsLife.com. Defending the Republic from enemies, foreign and domestic. It's Alex Jones. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight here in Austin. And from the UK, we're being joined now with Paul Joseph Watson. We're going to talk about a couple of articles that he's got up on Infowars.com. Smart streetlights attract everything we do all the time. You can believe that because now CBS News is reporting it. And also, can a slave ever truly understand freedom? A man who escaped from a North Korean death camp now wants to return. So we're going to talk to Paul Joseph Watson about that. Before we do, I want to let you know that this hour of the Alex Jones Radio Show is brought to you by some of the products that we offer here. And of course, that's the way we fund our operation. We're not funded by grants from the government. We're not funded by big pharmaceutical companies, as most of the networks are today. We're funded by the products that we offer you. We believe that they're a way to help you, and it helps us. It funds us, and it helps your family. One of those products is a 25% off special right now. That's Fluoride Shield. It's an exclusive blend of key herbs and ingredients specifically infused within the formula to help support the elimination of toxic forms of fluoride and other dangerous compounds like mercury, chlorine, and bromine from within the body. You can find that at InfoWarsLife.com. It's 25% off fluoride shield. Even if you're on a well, you're still going to get exposed, exposed to a lot of these chemicals. 
just as you move through society. If you ever eat out, you're going to be probably exposed in most places to fluoride in your water. We also have a limited edition of some new made in 1776 buckles. And of course, as the 4th of July is coming up, this is a great way to show your support of freedom. And this particular buckle is about Second Amendment rights. This is a Molon Lave buckle. It's the same beautiful design we have on our t-shirts. It's a limited edition run of only 500 buckles per color. They have made in 1776 on the back as well as a number that uh, tells you which one of these uh, special editions it is. It's a great conversation starter, and they look super. So you can find that at InfoWarsStore.com, and you can find the Fluoride Shield 25% off at InfoWarsLife.com. Welcome, Paul. How are you? David, good to be back. It's good to have you on here. You had a uh, interesting article here, and it was very interesting to hear what they had to say. Of course, Alex has been talking about this. InfoWars has been talking about this for a long time, but... Now we see that the mainstream media doesn't want to ignore this anymore, do they? Well, about the this, LED lights. Yeah, this is basically a product placement by CBS News talking about these new smart LED lights, which are being rolled out in major cities across the U.S. Las Vegas last year, also New York's rolling them out. And basically, they touted the environmental benefits of saving energy, saving money with these new LED lights. They kind of gave some token credence to the privacy concerns while skirting around them. And basically the, um, the CBS anchor says that these new smart streetlights, which as you said, we reported years ago through IntelliStreets, which is a different company introducing them, will have the ability eventually to track everything we do all the time. Because what they <laughs> don't tell you in this CBS news report is the fact that they can record and store actual conversations you're walking down the street, uh, the streetlight picks up your conversation, stores it, no doubt, in an NSA database. That's what they didn't tell you in the CBS report. But it, it was basically a product placement for these new um, spying systems let's masquerading play, as lights. Let's play a little bit of that report here. It's, it's a little bit too long for us to play the entire part of it, but let's play a little bit of that report from CBS This Morning. Should you find yourself in Terminal B at Newark Airport, look up. Those aren't just new lights, they're smart lights. A sophisticated array of LED fixtures with built-in sensors and cameras connected over a wireless network. They monitor security, the flow of foot traffic. Newark's primarily interested in energy savings. Hugh Martin is president of Sensitive, yeah, it's all about Silicon saving Valley energy. company that developed the smart lights at Newark and this parking garage in San Jose. So these lights, they sense that we're walking? Yeah, there's a motion sensor in each individual light. What does this do as far as energy? This week we saved about 3500 over $182,000 a year in energy saved just from this. Across the globe, cities are phasing out old energy wasting incandescent and sodium bulbs and replacing them. Okay, that's them with good. Yeah, LEDs. it's not about saving energy. You can save energy if you've just got an LED bulb, but they're talking about watching you, about tracking you. And they even show in that report, they talk about how they're using it for security in a private corporation's parking lot. And they say, this is tracking you everywhere you go. And as you just pointed out, Paul, they're recording it. So I don't think if you're, if you're tracking people, you've got all these other devices there and you're recording stuff, uh, that, I guess, really kind of hurts your energy savings a little bit, doesn't it? But it's really not about energy savings. No, it's, I mean, in the report, they also talk about um, license plate tracking. So it has very little to do with energy savings and everything to do with surveillance. And, you know, we ask commonly, what is the ultimate goal of surveillance? It's not about the surveillance itself. It's about cultivating the fear amongst the general public that everything they do is under ubiquitous surveillance. Yes. So it goes back to what we've talked about before, which is the panopticon effect. You know, what Foucault talked about in Discipline and Punish, which is that those who believe they are being watched will do what is wanted of them, mm -hmm. obedient compliance, without even realizing that they're being controlled. And that's, that's the whole idea. It's about creating this compulsion to obedience it's about institutionalizing the whole idea of, you know, don't stick your neck out, don't talk about politics, don't exercise your freedoms, don't deviate from the received wisdom of the establishment because Big Brother is always watching. That's the ultimate goal of surveillance, as we've explained many times. And the real freedom is to say, 
I don't care. I don't care if you're watching me. I'm going to do it anyway. And that's the, the attitude that people need to adopt. They're, they constantly are talking about Orwell in this uh, piece. They throw it out several times. And I thought it was interesting that at the very end where this reporter says to the guy that, uh, that people heard there at the beginning, uh, this is kind of Orwellian, isn't it? And he comes back and immediately says, well, wouldn't you want to protect your children if this could determine that somebody had a gun on them near a school? So as you're pointing out, they're looking at license plates. They're connecting it to a database. They bragged about how this was going to be a global system. And then at the very end, he's talking about scanning to see if somebody's got a gun on them. And of course, it's all about the children, isn't it, Paul? They always do that, whether it's destroying our borders or destroying our rights. It's all about children. It's always Hi. the beard. It sounds rather Orwellian. Yeah, here's that clip. At least the parents of um, kids at a school feel better if they knew that there was a analytic that looked for objects that could be guns on people that were coming into the school. Yeah, there you go. Wouldn't that be a good thing? Wouldn't that be a good thing? <laughs> it's, all, it's always for the kids, isn't it? Just like, yeah. you know, DHS attaching RFID tags to children because they really care about the kids. Oh, yeah. But it's not about, we know what it's about because we, we've seen the history, we've seen the pattern, we've seen where it's going. Um, there have been studies, for example, Stanford University 1975 study, which um, illustrated that participants will side with the establishment position on political arguments like legalizing marijuana if they think their responses are going to be seen by authorities. Um, there are other studies which show that people, writers, uh, um, are, are more reluctant to talk about political subjects, 25%, because they fear that it will be picked up in their emails, in their phone conversations with their friends. So a quarter of Americans, at least, are, are subjected to this panopticon effect where you self-censor, you self-regulate not only your free speech, but your behavior and the exercise of your freedoms which of course only benefits the establishment, only benefits the state, which is one of the major reasons why they're rolling out this huge surveillance network. That's right, you have to get over that hump. You have to get to the point where you say, I'm gonna speak out about this anyway, whatever the consequences, and then at that point, you're in. You're in, and now you're free to say whatever you want to, to criticize this, to speak up for your freedoms. Talking about that panopticon effect and people self-censoring themselves and being afraid to say what they are, it, take it one step further with this other article, Paul. Can a slave ever truly understand freedom? This is about the uh, guy who escaped North Korean death camp and now wants to return. Yeah, this is a, a documentary I watched a couple of nights ago called Camp 14 Total Control Zone. I encourage everybody to watch it. It's basically about a North Korean who was born inside a North Korean death camp he witnessed all kinds of horrors. He was brutally tortured, punished, he even witnessed the public execution of his mother and his brother. Wow. But because he had he had no innate family, you know, he couldn't embrace even the concept of family. He said that he had no emotion whatsoever when he was watching the execution of his mother and his brother. So when he risked his life to escape many years later, when he was 23, remember he was born in the camp, they basically conducted an interview with him. He defected to South Korea. And he said that he missed life in the camp and that he wanted to return to this North Korean death camp, this torture camp, because he felt pure. He had a lack of concern. He didn't have to worry about free will. So again, as I point out in the article, it speaks to this idea of you know statism in its most undiluted expression, which is the ability to induce this potent form of Stockholm syndrome, um, where the slave has the, the need to express free will or even think about free will completely eliminated. So even though he's being tortured every day, he's witnessing all these horrors, he moves to South Korea, relative freedom in comparison, and yet he wants to return to the death camp, which is why I asked in the headline, you know, can a slave ever truly understand freedom? Because if you're born into it, then what does freedom represent to you? So I made the, um, the comparison, you know, we've got billions of people who are content to remain imprisoned in their own self-imposed jail cells, again, going back to the fear of stepping outside their comfort zones in terms of surveillance. So you can draw a parallel between this North Korean uh, prison inmate who wants to return to the labor camp 
and billions of people today who are content to remain in their own self-imprisoned delusion and never, you know, peek outside Pandora's box. You know, I hear people talk all the time about the trade-off between